Hello everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good to have you here. Paul Tranny here. Diving into Photoshop Masterclass. Big thank you to Kathleen for doing her daily creative challenge. And uh, check out the schedule. Stay with us all day. We got some more masterclasses, by the way. Um, Jason uh, Levine will be up today and a number of other people. So uh, good to have you here. I'm a little dressed up. I'm feeling feeling good. And uh, I have some cool things to talk to you about. Selection and, and, and masks. The most, I would argue, the most important things. If you master these, this is most of Photoshop, is being able to select things and manipulate them at your will. So I'm a little dressed up. I do want to point out that my, I wish I could, I might zoom in on this, but you notice my little, little PS says, PS, I love you. PS, I love you. So that's my little pin. Uh, that is kind of cool. Good to have you here, Sam Peterson, Jan Eric, uh, uh, Aurelia, Austin, Priyanshu, Cecilia. Good to have you here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch screens and get this party started, as I like to say. So, yes, P.S. I love you, pin. Gotta love it. So, um, this is the plan. You know, obviously, selection tools. When to use which one? And there's a plenty of different ways of doing things, but um, you know, it all depends on the scenario that you're trying to do. It's like, what's the fastest way to sort of like cut something out? Okay, I'll show you that. There's some new tools in Photoshop 2020, which is super fun to check out. Uh, layer masks, clipping masks, pretty straightforward. Some pro tips there, obviously, since this is a master class. And then I'll also talk about and show um, vector masks, which chances are Jan Eric. A loop pan. I don't know if you guys have ever used um, vector masks, but uh, I'll talk about the cases and actually show you some cases where um, you could use them. I'll just kind of switch over. It's like you can't open up a Photoshop file and see where selections and see the number of masks. I know this one's kind of free. First of all, this one's kind of cool. Yeah, that one's cool. This one gets a little freaky. Wouldn't you agree? This one right here, that's a little freaky. Right? I get it. I'm still working on it. I get it. I'm going to do more unraveling. Um, oh, Jan Eric, I got an even sh faster way than just click select subject. Uh, uh, by the way, it's even faster than that, uh, considering you're trying to cut something out, and that's the goal. Okay. Uh, so let's kind of dive into it. I, I get it. This is really freaky. You can open up any of these files. You can see a number of uh, layers and layer masks right over here, selections, all that fun stuff. It starts to look like chaos, but trust me, uh, it's organized chaos, not to worry. Okay, but I have a number of files that uh, we can tackle. Okay, and even for this one, by the way, again, same situation, masks inside of masks, like of course, selections were made, and it's super fun. So uh, I use these. I have some shortcut keys for tiling all my images, by the way. So I encourage shortcut keys uh, per usual. Um, yeah, let's just take this one, actually. Just something simple like this. We have this situation. I don't know. I think I said something wrong. She's, she's totally ignoring me. She's like, I've, I will have, I'll have none of it, Paul. Not right now. That's what she's saying. Okay, and I want her just like... I want to uh, basically cut her out. Uh, Jan Eric said select subject, but let's kind of go over those right now. And first off, you should know, we can kind of go through, by the way, Jan Eric and Jordan, Jordan Crawford Ford in the house. Uh, magic wand tool, I should check on this because I'm pretty sure it was in the first, if not the first one or two uh, versions of uh, Photoshop, but the magic wand tool was one of the first. It was the content aware fill of its day, and we still use it today. We can go in, you know, use magic wand tool to click, and obviously, I have my tolerance set really low. It's usually what's it set to the default? Sam Peterson probably knows it's set to 32 is usually the default, but uh, you just hold down the shift key and you can start clicking around. Oftentimes, I use the quick selection tool, honestly. I jump in and I'll use that quick selection tool. I can refine it later, right? It's fine, okay? But let's get into the fun stuff, right? As I start to select. This image is actually just really large. So we gotta wait for it. We gotta wait for things. All right, I can come in here and provided oh this is fun i'm so glad this happened by the way 
um, right in here, uh, usually be set to this default, which is actually adding, okay? But we can control these two other options by holding down what? The shift key and then the option key, right? That's how we toggle between these other ones, shift key and option key. Sometimes you can actually have that clicked and that's what happened in my case. I had it clicked and it just removed. But I can come in here, adjust the brush size. You get it, you know how this works. I thought this was cool back in the day, right? And it's good for an afterthought after these first two things uh, may or may not work. But I need to cut her out because I'm gonna put her on a different background. Um, I think Jan Eric said uh, select subject. You can see right over here, as soon as you select a selection tool, you'll see select subject right here, okay? It's of course gonna be in this drop down right here, select subject. Super easy, right? We get it. Uh, you probably know how this works. Select subject, it'll go through, select that subject, and then we can mask her out like so, okay? which is pretty fast, that was two clicks. Guess what, I'm gonna remove the background in one click now, okay? We're gonna deselect, go into the properties panel. This is in uh, Photoshop 2020. Just don't forget about this, this is awesome. Um, selecting that layer, you'll notice right over here, oh, thank you very much in the properties panel. When you have a pixel layer selected, Right down here, we have select a subject, which we've already done, but we have remove background, which is even better. Oh, I hit the wrong one. All you have to do is click that one button, no hands mode. It does everything that I wanted it to. In one move, it actually puts that uh, layer mask. So that's typically what I encourage you to do. Don't forget about this button because I think it's hidden in this properties panel. And since it's not up here and it's not over here, you might lose it. I would love to see remove background right here, actually. Okay. I can't help it but to add a gradient in the background. Beautiful gradient. All right, Andrew Cavanaugh in the house. Good to have you here, Jesse as well, um, and everybody on uh, Facebook as well. So again, I can click through these different gradients. I actually just kind of dumped them all in one folder. We're gonna pick something a little brighter. She's looking out on this uh, beautiful, um, I don't know, sunrise of sorts as we add a little bit more to this, and I'll clean this up a little bit more as well. Let's draw out this little nice little circle, like so. Let's give that a little something something and a little something something. You get the idea. This is the start of something, right? Let's kind of move on from there. What's up, Tom? Uh, from here, I actually might select a little bit more, to be honest with you, if we go back to this original image. You can see these rocks down here. If we want to get into specifics, for what we're selecting, we want to go to the new object selection tool, right? Really easy to work with, selecting that click and drag over those rocks, right? These are files, I haven't even done this in advance, by the way, like, I just like, I know this is going to work, so uh, I haven't really like prepped this as a demo file, but there it is, selected those parts. I can always go in and clean that up a little bit like I need to right here, okay? You get the idea. B for brush. All right, since this is a master class, I mean, I'm only gonna cover this once, but it's making this layer, okay? White's gonna appear, white reveals, black conceals. So if I paint um, with white, selecting my brush, coming in here, adjusting the hardness, and it's just gonna go ahead and conceal. So black conceals, it's, or excuse me, uh, painting with white, so it's revealing more of that rock right there, okay? Just like that. Let's move on, super easy to work with. I have some issues right over here, okay? And some issues with my eye, right? This didn't come out as crisp as I'd like. Doesn't matter the scenario, right? Taking that and saying, hey, you know what? I can go in and I can try to clean that up. And oftentimes I will clean it up with the quick selection tool. Right, that's what you'll do. You'll come in here and you're like, okay, click right here, you know, click right here. Oh, mm -mm, kinda got it, kinda didn't, okay. Uh, this is where we go into the next step of quick selection tool might not work as effective. I don't really wanna outline everything with the lasso tool. That is like, think of the lasso tool, just think of, just call it the last tool. The last 
the lasso tool is like the last tool that you need when all these automatic um, features don't work for you, okay? And we still might use it because I love the lasso tool and I'll talk about that in a little bit. We'll go right up here, selected mask, boom. Like Kathleen was doing earlier, I'll go in here. I'm gonna use the refine edge brush tool and I'm just gonna paint in here uh, for this grass to remove that gray, right? That's what it's doing. Often people use this for hair, we could use it for grass, whatever we want, you get the idea. That's right, Jan Eric. Jan Eric's usually the one with like puns and jokes, so I'm glad you appreciate humor, Jan Eric. Good, good to have around, right? We can kind of fix that like so, make that look good, looks fantastic. Click OK, call it a day. I want to get into more Priyanshu. First of all, this is turning out pretty cool. Really straightforward. Just to recap. Let's even turn on this background. Boom. There we have it. There she's standing in front of a different uh, background that maybe has a blend mode on it. I don't know. I'm just playing around right now. Uh, but the short of it is you have this remove background feature. Don't forget about it. If that doesn't work, you can go to select subject and then you can do this object selection tool, and then you go into select and mask. Ooh, magic wand is called the tragic wand. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> that is funny, I haven't heard that in a little bit. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna shock you now. I'm gonna show you, since we're on the uh, subject of selections, I have a number of things. There's a nice image, I'll just close that. Some of these were just examples. Here's another one, really easy to work with, right? What do we do? Selection tool, select subject, boom. Select and mask, boom. Refine edge, look at all that white, getting rid of it magically, boom, boom, boom. Can this be any easier? Click OK. Um, super easy to work with, right? We did it. We did it, everybody, right? Add that fun gradient in the background because I'm obsessed with gradients. Especially these subtle ones down here. Like this one's nice. Okay, you get the idea. Cool, done. Let's get into something um, even more. Are you ready to, to be shocked here, Lamia? Um, let's just turn that off. Let's go back. Let's roll this back. And I'm still working on this, but let's just turn off that final. I get it. I look horrible, right? You already know all of these tools for what do I want to do? I don't got to clean me up. Ugh. Why? Again, we're using the spot removal because I'm like, was I in a war? Did I go to battle or something since the last time I saw you guys? Okay, closing that. I've just used the spot removal. Um, ch -ch -ch. Let's go ahead and jump in here. And this is just some really quick tips using camera raw filter coming down here. Since you're probably dealing with uh, photos, we'll take this texture down. Once I take that texture down, notice how it changes, right? So those are the two moves if you want to clean up a photo, right? Spot removal for those uh, localization uh, localizations, and then you want to go ahead and uh, use Camera Raw and take down the texture. By the way, once I'm in here, I'm gonna do this really fast as well. You want a magic button really fast. I know this doesn't have to deal with select and mask. Forgive me, click auto. Bam, that's the easiest button uh, to click and that looks a thousand times better. So much easier to see, click OK. Remember, we were dealing with selections today. Let's do it, it's the magic. It is the magic. Do this really fast, super easy. Select and mask, going in here with this brush. The thing I wanted to show you here, by the way, since we're dealing with select and mask, this one is different, although you think it looks the same. Yes, we have hair. Yes, we need to get rid of those uh, that green in the hair, right? And just leave parts of the hair that actually should be there, right? That's all I'm doing is painting right here. Luckily, I have this overlay mode turned on so I can see these parts that are typically hidden, right? And I'll just start scrubbing over that. Yes, Mel, uh, uh, Mel, I'm, I'm so glad I'm able to help you with that auto button. Because how many adjustment layers do you sometimes add to brighten up a picture or whatever else? It does all of that with one button. 
Uh, yes, Priyanshu, love it. I just love it. I, I love it. I love it when you like, you know the value of something and then you get to kind of share it with somebody else. It's super exciting. Okay. So that being done, I have this green, right? It's not going to be looking that good right down here. Most, I think this is probably the most important feature in here. Decontaminate layers. Okay. I have this green screen behind me. What do I want to do? Get rid of that green, click decontaminate layers and you can see what it does i can still go in right here and paint right there and it's going to decontaminate um that uh that uh, that area so anywhere where i see that background color it's removing that color again before after right done done click ok we can kind of move on Oh, Jordan, oh, I'm so happy that you guys know, now know these things. Yeah, so again, welcome here. If it's your first time, hit subscribe and like. Watch now, watch later. Put it on repeat. Share it with your friends and enemies, everybody, and all that good stuff. You ready for this? Um, and probably what I would do here, I typically do a backup. This is all real talk, by the way. I'll sometimes do a backup. Yeah, guess what? I'll, I'll apply a layer mask. I'm not afraid to have a have a backup layer and then just apply this layer mask because I know this one's going to get complex, right? Let's just take this. Let's copy paste, right? This is like the final Paul like that, okay? Because what I want to do is I want to start to add some... Uh, start adding and removing from parts of this face. So I could use uh, the last tool. I was calling it the lasso tool or the last tool lasso, right? I can come in here and kind of select that way. It's always gonna be a little rough, right? Just because your hand probably is not that steady, right? And then we can add a layer mask just like that. Okay, we get it, we see how rough it is, right? Um, that's why I'd actually shift gears. Give me one second to just to just to show my iPad my face and say, hey, yeah, it's me. Yeah, it's me, iPad. Who do you think it is? Who do you think owns this? Me. <laughs> All right. So let me connect to this real fast. Five, zero, four, seven. Did everybody get that secret code? I'm using something called uh, Reflector by the way, just to share my iPad right here. Okay, fantastic. Same situation, right? We have this face. I'll typically like maybe just create a duplicate layer and turn off that one on the bottom. But I find that Photoshop on the iPad, this is Photoshop on the iPad, makes it a little bit easier when it comes to selecting because I actually have uh, Apple Pencil to work with, right? And I could do it from the comfort of my bed. So zoop. Shoop, around the nose, shoop, down like that, up around the ear, up this way, smooth, like that. What do we do? Mask it out just like that. So you get the idea. You got it. Jan Eric. <laughs> All right. Making sure I'm answering everybody's questions. Oh, good. So, Michelle, it sounds like we have two buttons. We have the auto button in um, uh, good old uh, camera raw and then decontaminate layers. So I'm now working on the iPad, by the way, because I want to add some depth to this, right? Uh, typically, I'll go in here. I'll add some white and maybe I should put this, I don't know, on a black background or something. So maybe give me one second as I get fancy here. Just so kind of throw up a uh, some sort of gradient of some sort like that. There we go. You guys get the idea. Okay. So on the layer on top, we come in here. We select white. Again, I'm using Photoshop on the iPad, and I can start painting. What I want to do is create some depth. So I'm going to bring the size of this brush down, and I, I'm just going to create like a little bit of a bevel, but it's a hand painted bevel because I I know this bevel should not be even, right? It should have some irregularity to it. I'm painting some white right up here, right? And then we'll paint some black right down here. Just like that. 
Obviously, I'm coloring outside the lines, just like on the desktop right over here. I can go ahead and try to zoom in on this for you. This button right here, add a clipping mask, right? Boom, adds that clipping mask and now it's actually inside of, and I'm no longer coloring outside the lines. Still needs some work, by the way. I could paint and spend some more time on this. I'll change the um, this to like overlay mode, something like that, or soft light, just to kind of ease up on that. Both are a little a little strong. I'm not crazy about that black. I would probably separate those out. Um, but at least now I can kind of come in and on that layer, I can add highlights that I want to add as I kind of paint up here at the top, right? So I'm just adding highlights or adding some darks using that dark color, painting in and making it dark down below. You get the idea, okay? So that's just a clipping mask, showing you clipping masks on uh, iPad and uh, also on the desktop, right? What do we do? We have this layer. We could do the same thing, right? Zoop, zoop, around the nose down, right? It's super rough I, as I hit my laptop with my mouse. I'm just using a mouse, right? And then we can mask that out like that, okay? <sighs> like I did earlier. But what I could do that would be even better is um, it's like an inverse burglar mask. Yeah, I want to do like an unraveling of, like I want, I want, I need to really work on this image, by the way. I, I shouldn't have posted it it needs more work. It needs so much more work. And just to clue everybody in, this is currently the final. I'm going to take out more pieces because it's going to look cooler if I have, there's going to be more pieces taken out and there's going to have more stuff kind of bursting out of my head. Okay. So that's kind of the idea. Okay. But right in here, how do we want to do that? Well, we're going to create a clipping mask. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to go in here. We're going to grab a number of ways we could do this, by the way use the pen tool and I'll just make a shape. This is how I would consider doing this, by the way. There's, I'm gonna show you two different ways, totally up to you as a professional to pick the one that you want. And I actually just decided which one's better, okay? I'm gonna show you what I used to do, okay? Is come in here and I'd say, okay, I need to create a mask, a reverse mask as somebody just mentioned, uh, right up here, click right, oh, let's do this. Click, 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 follow the bridge of the nose, come down, smooth transition, zoop, down here, make the sound effects, click over. Oh no, I can't see where I'm clicking now, right? Because it's covered in white. When come over here, we take the fill down. Take it down to zero if I want, right? But we'll just kind of keep it so everybody can see what I'm doing a little bit. Click up here, you get the idea. Click, 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 like that. There it is. The reason I like using vector masks is we can go in and uh, manipulate these points also after the fact and get those smooth curves, right? Remember, this is a, just a, it's just a shape currently. It's currently just a shape, right? I can see it right here called shape 12, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna put me inside of that shape. Well, let's bring that fill all the way up and then let's move it underneath Paul. I usually hold down the option key, but also you can right click and create clipping mask. It'll do the same thing boom, and then it clips it where appropriate. All right, Michael Crabtree is in the house. Good to see you, buddy. All right. So again, what do we do here? The great part about this is I still have that underlying shape, right? I can come in, make less, more. You understand by now like how this works. And then you also understand clipping masks, right? I wanna sort of control the um, uh, separate out the mask 
from just one layer, to be honest with you. I want to have a shape. I want to have um, a mask on the top. Oftentimes, people will al always do this with text. You're going to go in there, add your text like so, adjust that letting big time in the properties panel. Excuse me, not the letting, the letter spacing. Crank that up. We would do the same thing with text. As soon as I can find it. There's my text. Give me a second. Oop, wrong way. There we go, you get the idea. Separate, separates them out. I don't even know if this is really like masterclass worthy. Like I think clipping masks are essential, but they should be hopefully um, like an intermediate skill, okay? A beginner to intermediate skill, right? I can now separate this out. I decide to put in my middle initial. You get the idea. We decide to adjust the letting, or excuse me, the letter spacing. Option command, uh, left arrow, right arrow, we'll adjust that accordingly, right? tighten that up there you have it right new idea cool thing about this we get as many of these layers as we want come in here give me one second boom boom gradient as a clipping mask as well so now we have two clipping masks boom boom and then we'll change this um, to like overlay for instance and now I have this different overlay um, different layer uh, being applied to that same clipping mask, right? You get the idea. Uh, the R stands for Ryan. And that's actually what my family calls me, Ryan. Because Paul was too formal for a baby, for a little toddler. So my family calls me Ryan or Paul Ryan. Um, Let's kind of go back to our, our shape, by the way, because this was our original idea. We can see right here, there's my shape. We can throw the gradient on top of it if we want to, like that. Okay, we could isolate those two. You ready for this, John Eric? I'm getting down to, uh, I guess, my fourth bullet right over here. You can see as I talk about vector masks, okay? That's my might be what I consider for this. So this one is going to be um, uh, one example, and then I'm going to do the same thing using a vector mask. Ha ha ha! Yes, thank you, Tim. I'm I'm trying to teach mas teach master level content. By the way, so this is like. It kind of is for people who want to be masters. So it should be intermediate to advanced, but I find that that just like varies per person and it varies what you use Photoshop for. You know, I actually failed the, the Photoshop test twice. I, it took me three times to pass the Photoshop test because I was always using Photoshop for web content and I didn't know the print side. So I kept on failing because I didn't know all of Photoshop, and I think that's the case for most people. All right, so I want to show you this real fast. I uh, lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, let me show you this. By the way, I need to duplicate this layer. Tim, tell me this, this happens, by the way. How many of you will, like, take this clipping mask and you will... Let me pull it out of the side. I'm so sorry for all this zooming. And you'll drag it down here. When you drag it down here and duplicate that layer, it breaks the clipping masks, right? That's only when you drag it down here. If you do Command J, oh, dang it. I swear I did this the other day and it worked. <laughs> Never mind. I thought Command J would not break it. Okay. So, so much for that theory. All right, next example right here for uh, my forehead. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have this layer selected. I'm going to go in and use the pen tool. And instead of making it sh a shape that then gets converted into a layer, um, a clipping mask, I'm going to make it a path. Okay, so I'm going to make this a path on this layer, by the way. And now I'll just click. I don't have to worry about changing the fill mode to 
50% or 20%, but now I can click, 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 zoop, like that. It doesn't make that extra layer over here. It doesn't clutter it up. In fact, where does it appear? Right over here. It's just a work path, okay? But once that's done, okay, and let me just adjust it a little bit. Bring that up like so. Let's have it capture some of my hair. Do like that. Bring this down. With this path selected, I will go into layer down to vector mask. And what you wanna do is just do current path. Okay, if I do current path, it masks out obviously that current path for that layer that you have selected. And that's my vector path. The great thing about this is this is a little bit more elegant solution. First off, if I look at the one below it, which is the clipping mask, right? The one below is a clipping mask. I'm still going to have that white. I'll try to change the fill, take it all the way down. Guess what? Not going to work. I wonder if I change the fill to nothing over here, right? It's not going to work, right? I can't change the, I can't do anything, right? But to get rid of that white, I don't want that white. Plus, I just don't want all those layers. I now have this more elegant solution, which is my vector mask, right? And then I would just take this and I would duplicate this layer and edit this path as well. Let's bring this down like so. Maybe we will give this a little bit of a, like a, a crack in between and you get the idea. Cool. Uh, why not text cutout mask? Rasim, if you're asking, um, you wanna use a clipping mask for text because if, if you use a layer mask for text, it means that you can't change that text later on. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Jan Eric says, uh, Cool. Option Command G. What does Option Command G do? Option Command G. Oh, clipping. Okay, that's what. It, that's the shortcut key for clipping. Awesome. Into it. Okay, very cool. So now I can come in here. By the way, these we want to use these in combination now as well. We'll take like this one for instance. Add that new layer. Come in here. Hit B for brush. Hit. Uh, Hit those default keys, hit X, we'll always flip these two colors. So I could start painting with white. I'll take the flow down. Again, the same thing I was working on earlier. Let's get rid of, let's move that up. It's just brush work. Let's do some brush work. Let's do it. Uh, tighten it up. Opening bracket. I have some nice smoothing on this line too because my hand is typically not that smooth. Clipping mask right there, change this to like uh, soft light and that's all we're doing is we're bending it a little bit. You got it. Okay. Uh, Priyanshu, you can add text inside of a layer mask and can you have it editable? That's my question for you. Can you have a layer mask that has text in it that's editable? Would love to see it. All right, here's another pro tip. Let me go to let me go to this other image. Since we've played with this for a little bit, you can kind of understand how this was built now as we turn this on. This is built actually I'll show you right now. Uh, you can see the clipping masks and the layer masks right in here. It all kind of comes down to the face. And let me actually turn these off, okay? Let me just kind of start this over, right? Because what do we have here um, for the, the front of the face, right? Right in here. Um, I've just added additional layers that are being clipped to that layer group. And that's how that's put together. So I'm just kind of turning these on and you kind of see what that looks like. Cool, Rasim, awesome. 
Uh, fantastic. Ak Akenska? Uh, yeah, you're looking at building out your portfolio. You don't know what to add in it. I'd say add, they usually say eight to 10 pieces if you're doing a portfolio. Ideally, they're consistent, right? Look at some of the best, even your best Instagram, the people that you follow on Instagram. All their work is consistent, and that's what people want in a portfolio is like consistent work so they know, so a potential employer or client knows what they're paying for. That's the short of it. All right, let's turn all this stuff back on. You get the idea. Let's go to a different example, by the way. Look at that crazy burst I was working with. Ugh, oh, ouch. That's got to hurt. All right, there we go. Let's go to a different version. Let's go to this like double exposure one as well. And let me show you a couple other pro tips. You ready for this? We're, I have some time. This is really good. Uh, we can make something like this. And again, super cool and pretty easy to work with. Okay, but we're still going to talk about, we're going to go back to selections. Okay, we've done some selections here. I want to get into a new type of selection as I open up this file right here. Okay. Um... Here's an image, and this happens a lot. Um, you wanna just remove the background, and the background might be a certain color, okay? So if you wanna remove uh, just like one color, think about doing this, and I gotta, uh, I gotta give credit to Je Jesus Ramirez showed me this about six months ago. Uh, I'm gonna double click right in here, so I'm gonna go into the layer modes for this layer, which is this layer zero, double click, Boom, here we are. And let's get rid of that panel. Double clicking right here, we'll go into the blending options for this layer right down here. We can knock colors out if they're gray, red, green, or blue. Okay, and I really wish you could actually just select a color would be fantastic as well. But right in here, we'll go down to say for instance green, right? For this layer, right? And as I drag this, to the left, it starts to remove all of that blue. See what's happening there? It removes all of that blue non-destructively. Uh, if you wanna have a little softness, well, guess what? You can hold down the Option key, click, and it's gonna split that point. And you can see right in here, it starts to sort of grab some of that, and get rid of some of that softness. I need to kind of tighten it up. But you'll notice it also in this tree, it makes it for a smoother transition. So yes, Jesus Ramirez from Photoshop Training Work Channel. Thank you for that, Jan Eric, adding that reference right there. So that's what I'm doing, knocking out that green. Um, did I say green? Why am I knocking out green? It should be blue. That was weird. It's funny that the green actually worked. Let's go to blue. Okay, the blue gets knocked out even sooner. The thing is, is I think there's actually more yellow in this grass than in the clouds or the sky. So there we go, same process, boom, doom, click OK, done. This could be really helpful because if you happen to stumble upon a file and um, it happens to uh, maybe look a little bit different than what you expected, right? Let's just drop that in there, right? We have our new scene made. It's looking fantastic, brand new scene. But if you ever opened up this file and you're like, hey, uh, where, how do you, how are you knocking out that, uh, that sky there? How are you doing that magic? You won't see a layer mask or a clipping mask or anything like that. So double click, you'll find it right in there. Done and done, okay, cool. All right, for a lot of other things, let's even take a look at some of these others. I'm going back to this double exposure image that I'm working on. Um, this was made largely with a bunch of branches that I already had. And what I have is I have a lot of images that are actually uh, on white, okay? And there's a number of ways to remove things that are on white, okay? Right in here, for instance, you might think select subject or remove background. I usually try the easy steps. Let's try remove background. 
Yep, it removes background. Does all that magic, but it only does that for that one shape. So then I'd have to go in and select that second one. But another way of doing things, if they have uh, one solid color, think about jumping in and going to select. And this is an oldie but goodie, using color range. Selecting within a color range. Selecting color range, clicking right in here, boom, right? We're selecting that white. We can see that fuzziness there. I can add and remove. I'm using those same shortcut keys that I would uh, on my desktop. It might select more, like it's selecting this white part, and I'm fully aware that it's selecting that white part uh, right in here that I gotta take care of later. But you can see you can kind of adjust the fuzziness, which you don't get with some of the other tools. Selecting that, again, layer mask. Oh, guess what? I need to invert it. There it is. And what do I do? I go into select and mask, and I probably shift the edge in this case, to be honest with you. It didn't work out too well. And I'd probably paint over that spot right there. Okay. And you get the idea. But just don't forget about uh, using color range to select a, a certain color and removing uh, that color. If it's like part of the background, like this image might also work as well. Let's go beyond this into something else. A case where you have, this is a beautiful bird. I cannot remember uh, the type of bird this is, but this is a clear situation. I can still use, actually let's go into something else that's a little bit more complex. Anytime you have something that has a depth of field, not you my friend, that might be a little harder to select otherwise. Ah, oh, cute kitties. This, this is like expert level selections right in here. What if I wanted to just kind of like have these cats selected? Here's something you can try as well. Going into select, since I know there's this shallow depth of field, I can go to select and I can go to focus area. Okay, selecting focus area, no hands mode. It's gonna go ahead and determine what is sharpest. I haven't even done this with this image yet. Oh, it needs to grab a little bit more. We'll grab that slider and move it to the right, as you see, and I can kind of dial it in like so. Of course, it's not gonna get every little hair, uh, but that's why we have masking, and that's why this is all about select and mask. Um, so that was an okay photo to do it with. Um, trying to grab other uh, images. Here we go. Select focus area. No hands. That'll do its thing. Select focus area. By the way, what I was actually looking for is I was looking for an image that if I did a close up of a table and I, I took a photo of something with shallow depth of field, but everything was at a slightly different depth. A lot of these are just two types of depth. There's foreground and there's background. Most images are that way. I'm actually looking for an image that has varying levels of depth, and that's why you have this in focus range, right? That's where its power lies. We can see already, it's already doing it here, um, but that's what I'm looking for in this case. Can't quite find something that has that. Uh, I have a hit. I have a hiker somewhere. I just don't know where my hiker is, to be honest with you. Here's another one that we could work with. As we go into select focus area, you get the idea. Uh, yes, that was a cardinal. Cardinal is a bird. Boom, there we have it. Just like that, click okay. Why would we do that? Typically it's to kind of throw some text in there for Yosemite. Stretch that out like so, zoop, zoop, and now we have it behind him using the new or up or sort of elevated properties panel. Boom, boom, you get the idea. All right, so Cubby Girl, we are working on uh, Photoshop for the iPad. Um, adding effects tools where we're looking at adding those all those tools currently there is a blur we ne need to add more we also need to add um, the refine edge tool which I know we're working on as well okay cool 
Uh, going back to this other image that I was working on, I could probably close out a lot of these. I feel like I've been going really fast. Hopefully not too fast. So quick mask mode, uh, Prianshu, what quick mask mode does, I actually don't, to be honest with you, I don't use it because uh, for various reasons. Um, quiz, quick mask mode would make a temporary selection and I think it would typically hold it in, in uh, the channels actually. And that feature, that predates, um, I think that actually predates layers. I could be wrong, but that used to be the only way to sort of like save a selection. So, um, yeah, watch these about half speed and uh, you'll be good to go. But we've been covering lots of things. Obviously, I'm kind of going through all of these and uh, reviewing anything for these again same situation and probably this is kind of where we get down to to quizzing like if i wanted to do the same thing here as i do want to do with the buffaloes i want to put this text in here how would i or how would you do that right i want to put this text in here it's going to be behind the buffaloes what is the best way for doing that? And what would you try? There's always a delay in chat, so that's why quizzing doesn't really work unless you got some time. All right, so we'll put this on top. We'll create a little sandwich right here uh, with this one. Again, we can go through to remove background. This is the quickest thing, the quickest button that will work. Boom, remove background uh is the answer right there let's done it just like that okay yeah we can do that so um let's say for instance let's let, let me let me answer your question make sure i'm answering all questions by the way uh it did make a layer mask on eric exactly right our end result is probably going to be a layer mask because we want to be able to control maybe it didn't grab all those pixels or all that and we could see there's that fine line well guess what what do we want to do there select that and that's why we are doing selecting and masking at the same time because in this case we want to mask out and use refine edge right here on just the top of that buffalo like so so any parts like that click ok you get the idea I could just tighten that up some more. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. So right in here, I can I can have this selection. And let's pretend, uh, let's just kind of roll this back. Maybe I just have this current selection right here, right? I can go to select. I want to save this selection for later because I spent so much time tweaking it. Go into to select, save selection, right? Save this selection as buffalo in a new channel. Clicking OK will open up my channels panel. Here it is. We could see it right here. Okay, so deselect. So this is actually really pretty good if you are doing kind of a situation like I had with, um, with my face, right? If I spent all that time selecting my face, I might want to save that selection for later, right? I just need to hold on to it, like just in case I need it, if I need to make any tweaks accordingly, okay? There's more things I can do. I can, I wanna talk about some more things as well. So we'll go back into our buffaloes. There are bi our bison. Here it is, right? I can see it right there. I can also just hold down the command key, click, and now I've selected it. And in this case, and this is what we used to do, you'd have to apply any sort of adjustments kind of destructively. That's like, I haven't used this in a while because I don't use destructive edits that much. But right in here, just kind of like making that buffalo like a little bit brighter. I'm actually, notice how I'm just, I'm using that selection. Pretty easy. 
pretty easy. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, I think I saw... Uh, we have that squared away. We've saved as selections. We can edit in quick mask mode. Here I am in quick mask mode, by the way. So at this point, if I take a brush and change this, whoops, there we go. So we're now in quick mask mode. So it's just a different way to add and remove selections, right? So quick mask mode, uh, I have black selected so I can remove or I can hit X to flip those two, adjust my brush size and density, right? Get rid of that feather and I can kind of paint in this background for instance. So this is, again, just quick mask mode allowing me to paint just like you would with a layer mask, but you're actually adding to the selection is what you're doing here, okay? Painting in that, and yeah, I could probably use a quick selection tool as well. Clicking right there, using the quick selection tool, I can fill that in. All right, there's my quick mask, just my like my selection that was saved. I'm editing in quick mask mode. I can get out of that mode by unchecking it. And now I have that selection set up, All right? Okay, so um, yeah, thank you so much. It looks like somebody's talking about explaining the complicated double exposure look, right? What is this? Well, guess what? It's just a lot of those selections and masks. So when you look at something complex like this, you think, oh geez, how did you, like, how did you do that? It's all selections and masks. And if we take a look right over here, I can actually probably even do this. Since I have four minutes, let's see how fast I could do this. You ready? Select subject, boom. Select and mask, refine edge, increase the brush size, paint over the hair, right? I probably actually don't even need that side of the hair, right? Cause that's gonna be branches. I really only need this part up at the front right there. Maybe a little bit on the eyebrows. Um, don't need to worry about decontaminating colors. Click OK. Boom. There it is. She's isolated, right? Um, what I would typically do in this case is maybe have a layer group, right? And this will be all the branches, right? And for these branches, I'm actually going to uh, use that, use this selection, and I'm going to add that as a mask on that group, that layer group. So anything inside of this folder, case in point, as I, there it is. We put this inside the folder. It's gonna, that's my, this is like my active area. Right from here, I can hit B for brush, paint with white, because I want those branches to kind of come out here. And by the way, I'd probably even, I could even use some of these different brushes too. Let's not worry too much about that because I only have a couple minutes, right? But we want to use this area. This is where all the branches are going to flow from. There it is. What do we do? We take our branches, which I happen to have a library full of them. Flowers and branches. And we can start grabbing some of these real fast. Let's grab this one. Boom, there it is. Like that. We might want this to be a little bit more flowy. So what do we do? We use Puppet Warp. Boom. Right there it is. Puppet Warp. Pin, pin. I want this to follow the curve of the head a little bit more and be a little bit more flowy and less branch-like. I would do something like that, right? Start bending that like so. That looks good grab another brand or grab some something and grab more some things. Ooh, this is a good one. This is the one I want. Boom. There it is. Right. Perfect. What do I do for this complex situation? I'd probably use color range to be honest with you. Oops. Let's just deal with this. Select color range. Boom. Crank that up a little bit like so. Click okay. 
there it is, mask it out, invert it, because I do that all the time. I accidentally like do that. By the way, here's another thing I'm doing, by the way. Check this out. Pro tip, Jordan, you ready for this, Jan Eric? Sometimes you'll use a tool and you won't, it won't be purely black or purely white. I can use that layer mask, selecting that layer mask, using something like levels, because see these grays? Oh, there's some like transparent pixels. No, just like give me all of it, right? Knock that out. And I can use those different um, blend modes on it just like that. There it is. Put it inside of that folder like so. Turn that on. There's the face. I can clean that up some more. I get it, right? Wait for it. I want to do this as fast as possible. There's her face, rotating it like so. There's the start of it. I'd actually take her face again, ugh, down to my last minute, turn it on. And what I would do here is, uh, yeah, I could, I could like clip it right to that. And then I would start playing with the um, layer blend modes right in here, just to bring in like a little bit of that color of the face like that or something, right? Just kind of play with it a little bit, just a little tint like so. Turning all these on, giving me a second. As I wrap this up, thanks so much for hanging out with me, putting that one in the folder, you get the idea. And uh, I think this was a great question, you know, asking like how something was put together and um, that's what I'm doing now. So thanks for joining me. Um, I covered quite a bit. I'll probably get cut off soon. Adding these leaves right in here. We could do that too for the top. Making these leaves look like hair. Wait for it. Command T. Rotate. Shoop. Put that right up there. And lastly, probably what I would do is add a color lookup table to give it maybe a crisp warm look or something, something else. I'll work on that some more. Cool. And there's the final, you can see right there. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's been a whirlwind of a morning. If you've been watching the whole hour, you've probably, it's either reaffirmed things you've already known, um, and you've probably definitely like learned things. Because I know I even like learned things based on these questions. I was like, oh, I haven't used quick masks before and everything. So thanks so much for your help um, in making this a better stream and uh, keep the feedback coming. Really appreciate you and everyone here, Sander and Christy and Lisa and just everyone, Andrew. Have a great day. Um, I'm going to be working on this some more. Feel free to give me feedback on Instagram. It needs a lot of work, but hey, that's what's fun about life. We're only getting better here, I would say. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. What is my problem? There we go. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Appreciate you. Have a good day. Make sure you call your mom. Get lots of sleep.